Oh my goodness. And there it is. Wow, get the mission to go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bowl TV for day number two of qualifying at the 2021 USBC Queens from the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. My name is Aaron Smith with Bowl TV, and uh, we are excited to bring you this coverage once again, day two. So after today, all competitors in the field, all 110 of them, will have 10 games underneath their belts, uh, and we'll kind of get to see a picture of what the cut line is going to be. We had some high scores yesterday, but the cut is still in the minus overall. So that'll be something we'll be diving into uh, over the course of today on this 42-foot pattern. The second time, or technically the third time, these athletes have been able to see it out here. Uh, the story of day number one, Jordan Richard uh, averaged 246 for her five-game block, including a 290 in game four. Uh, she actually finished with 559 for her last two games. So uh, in talking to Jordan, she uh, she got into the right bowling ball in the second game really didn't have to move after that uh was able to kind of navigate and stay in the same area and uh from there it was just lights out repeating shots keeping her angles pretty tight and then uh striking for days basically so we're going to see if uh that can continue today but uh for right now we're going to go out to the lanes uh we're going to start off by seeing uh stephanie zavala who won the greater cleveland open last week she was sitting in second place overall she was at plus 188 for the day uh, in comparison, Jordan leading at plus 230. Uh, so uh, pretty big margin from first to second place there to start. But uh, since Jordan is a, is on the low end of the house, we're, we have eight channels available today uh, here on BowlTV.com to check out. So that's where we're going to head to kick things off. So uh, let's do that right now. Go full screen here, and we'll bring in Jason Thomas in just a little bit. Uh, Mike Flanagan will be joining us throughout the course of the day as well from Inside Bowling. And unless you are making the turn, come in. Hi, Adam. All the way down to the right. We'll be underway in just a second. And, folks, JT is, uh, JT is running around making sure all the uh, scoreboards are up there. All the uh, game of graphics are getting updated. So uh, those will be coming in just a brief moment before JT joins us here for game number one. A big good morning to everyone watching us on Facebook and YouTube as well. We will be here for game number one before we uh, switch the cameras or switch the feed to bowltv.com only. So uh, please feel free to head on over, check it out. Uh, you do have to subscribe to watch the rest of the block. Uh, and that goes for the entire course of the competition. Uh, we'll have these sneak peeks throughout the course of the week, but I uh, definitely want to uh, get that subscription in if you want to check out the Queens here. Uh, over the course of the entire 2021 event. A few different price points. The event ticket to watch a live coverage of the Queens, including the Step Ladder Finals on May 18th. 12 95 You can pick up a monthly recurring subscription, which gives you access to the entire website. For $9.95. And then the annual recurring subscription, $79.95. Transaction fees do apply for all of those. So our first look here at Stephanie, plus 188, coming off of the win in just her third career PWBA Tour event as a member. So pretty crazy. Now uh, we've seen some players, you know, we talked a little bit, a little bit about it yesterday with Jordan Richard, uh, I believe winning in her fourth event as a member in 2018. And uh, Stephanie in three events. Pretty impressive stuff from the former Sam Houston State standout. Folks, as we settle in here, watching Stephanie, Jessica Abel, and then Sofia Granda.
And as we kick things off here, I'd like to welcome in Jason Thomas to the show for the first time here at the Queens. Jason Thomas, hello. Hello, hello Aaron. Um, yesterday, my, my audio didn't work. And I don't know if that, I think that was on purpose. Somebody sabotaged me. Nobody wanted to hear me speak. Well, technically, it was just sabotaged on, on mine and Mike's end. So everyone else could hear you loud and clear, just not us. So i uh, glad we figured that out. Uh, and we have you here joining us for uh, day number two. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a, a great first day. Uh, it was interesting to see, uh, you know, Mike Flanagan be right for a change. Uh, wow! And uh, well, he's not here to defend himself, so that's true. Uh, but no, he he really called that Jordan Richard thing. Uh, she bowled great yesterday. We're going to get a chance to watch her here today. See if she can continue uh, her her great bowling. Uh, but yeah, I mean, basically, you have a day like that 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 locks you into the, the cut and uh and now you can you know kind of get some more information the next couple of days for the, for the matches but uh you know there's uh it was interesting really nobody's out of the tournament at this point you know everybody in the field still has a chance to get there um you know obviously you know there are a couple of players that need some big big days today but um you know it was it was uh, kind of an interesting day it, it's basically wide open as far as who can get to the cut, there are a couple of big name players that are currently on the outside looking in. Um, you know, they'll, they'll need to have you know good days today and tomorrow. But but these days go by so quickly. Uh, these these five games are over in the blink of an eye, and then you've got to figure out what to do. You know, the next time. So, gonna be fun to watch. Part A of the tournament over the next uh, two days, and then we'll have Part B the funnest part of really any tournament was head to head double elimination bracket matches. They are fun, aren't they? They are. In talking to Jordan yesterday on Bull TV, after she uh, wrapped up that impressive block, you know, she said from watching a squad a little bit earlier in the day, she actually felt that uh, she saw a few players get a little bit farther left than uh, where she thought she needed to be. And, you know, Jordan's typically, you know, considered one of the higher rep players on tour. And she actually said she wanted to keep everything kind of in front of her, kind of play more to the right. And uh, and from there, it was kind of uh, after game one, she said she made a ball change in the 10th frame. And then after that said she only moved three boards uh, the rest of the day. So uh, obviously with uh, with the way the cross works here in this 42 foot condition, uh, it's you're going to see a lot of the fresh. Uh, Mike mentioned during qualifying, your first two games are on fresh, so 40% of the tournament on fresh. But, uh, you know, minimal moves, a lot of great shots, and then uh, that striking power she delivers with as well uh, resulted in a great day. And she's uh, taking a look at live scoring, which is available right now, folks. Uh, three for three so far to kick things off. Yeah, she's, she's keeping it going. You know, the thing I think these players need to pay attention to is as soon as you – make a good shot you're let's say you're lined up and you know it, it could be anywhere between five and 12 you know to start where you're, where you're crossing the arrows as soon as you make a good shot and you four pin or go high move uh because if you don't you know you're going to probably waste a game or or, or more uh thinking hey i've got to I, I gotta try to make this work from out no you can move in on this pattern um, you know, there, there's a little bit of a cliff at 15. So as soon as you start to see that, uh, that transition starting to happen, move and, uh, and it, and you can, you can put together, you know, a, a block, like we saw Jordan put together yesterday where it's just really no bad games in there. You know, she didn't really hit any, any pairs where she lost her look and it just got better as the day went on. So, um, that that's out there. Taking a look at the numbers, uh, you know, we mentioned plus 230, a 246 average for Jordan. Uh, right now, the cut to advance is minus eight. So that is uh, quite a discrepancy. And JT, as you said, uh, you know, still pretty much everybody has a chance to get, you know, shake off a bad day one. You know, we've, we've talked about that previously. Sometimes, uh, you know, there, there's opportunities to basically pull yourself out of this event to day one. So uh, a lot of people still within the reach of this. Uh, and, you know, just kind of taking a look at the breakdown here. Jordan was the only player to average more than 240. Uh, four players averaged better than 230. 16 better than 220. 31 averaged better than 210. 58 averaged more than 200. Um, so, uh, 
one good day here, one good block can put you in position here to make this bracket, which, uh, you know, essentially, as, as we talked about, and you'll hear us uh, uh, continue to mention it, is that two events in one. You just you just got to make it to the dance. That's all you want to do. And then everything starts over fresh. Obviously, your qualifying determines your seating in the bracket and who you're facing, your path, hopefully, to the TV show. But it is uh, uh, all fresh, and you only have to worry about one opponent after that instead of the whole field, the total pinfall, and all that excitement. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I was really fascinated yesterday by, by the number of players that were kind of between, you know, minus 30 and plus 50. You know, there were just a huge number of players in that in that group. And, you know, I think it's a testament to the, you know, skill of, of Nick Hoagland to put out a pattern where – you know, basically the pockets in play um, for everybody, no matter how, you know, where you, you want to play them, but, but also doesn't yield, you know, ridiculously high scores. Um, you know, we saw, we, we, we just saw, you know, all these record setting scores from the women's championships coming into this event. So these players can light them up and put up huge scores. And we saw it last week in Cleveland. Uh, if you give them a little bit of room to play with, we didn't see that yesterday. You know, there's only one player that averaged over 240. I mean, it sounds like a lot, but you know, these players are all capable of averaging 240 if you give them, you know, enough room to play with. So it, it's really, really a great pattern that allows a lot of different players to play where they like to play and still have a look. Uh, and it's not really yielding too many high scores, uh, but they're there if you bowl a great game. So I just really like it. It's it's. Uh, I think it's the kind of pattern you want to see. Taking a look at some of the top scores overall. I mentioned Jordan at plus 230, Stephanie Zavala plus 188, Danielle McEwen plus 183, Caitlin Johnson plus 151. All those players bowling right now on B squad. Uh, the high competitor from A squad yesterday morning, Shannon Sellens at plus 148. Shannon, one of the most uh, consistent performers over the past couple of years at the major championships. Made the TV show at the U.S. Women's Open in 2019. Liz Johnson bowling on this squad, plus 142. Gigi Mason had a 297, uh, sits in seventh place overall at plus 139. She was on A squad. Kelly Kulik also on A squad, plus 136. Benia Kobo plus 135, and then Kayla Machina plus 127. Your top 10 in ring competition today. For those of you watching on boldtv.com, uh, one of the great resources that uh, you do have available here that we use throughout the course of the competition as well, uh, above the chat area. You will find a couple different tabs. And the one in the middle is actually uh, a link to one of the pages we have on bowl.com for the queen. So essentially that is our uh, page that we use to uh, collect this information that we talk about throughout the course of competition. So all that available at your fingertips, not only here on bowltv.com, but on bowl.com slash queens and pwba.com. But uh, we've got the schedule, roster, prize fund, pairings, condition, live scoring, topography report, uh, and, of course, all the standings as well. JT mentioned record scores at the Women's Championships, and the two players paired up with Stephanie here uh, each added their name to the record books. The record book, excuse me. There's only one at the Women's Championships. But uh, Jessica Abel was part of the highest team game in tournament history for a four-player team, which uh, was introduced at the Women's Championships in 2014. So she teamed with Adrian Hare, Emily Fagan, and Deandra Asbady to shoot a 10:43 total for their final game, in the team event. So uh, that's. It's a 260 plus average for a team game, which is, uh, as you uh, can relate to, even just competing in leagues back home does not happen very often. So uh, to have everybody lined up for a game, shoot a big number, 
pretty fun to watch. A lot of strikes. So they set the four-player team game record. Currently sitting in seventh place overall. Team standings, and then Sofia Granda. Uh, old with Maria Jose Rodriguez. And uh, they created, uh, or they took over, I should say, the uh, doubles record for the women's championships and uh, did so in demanding fashion. Uh, there had never been a 1,500 set in doubles prior to Maria and Sophia lacing up just a couple days ago here at the NBS. They shot 1,560 for their double score. Maria had 810, so it became just the ninth player in tournament history to roll an 800 series. And Sophia added 750. In, uh, in talking to Maria and Sophia after the fact, it was uh, uh, one of the players who usually pulls with Maria was unable to make it this year. And so she was actually looking at the roster for the Queen and she saw Sophia was was uh, on the roster. So she gave her a call and said, hey, Sophia, want to bowl on my team with me? Bowl doubles together. And Sophia was like, really? You want me to bowl? That's awesome. I'll bowl with you. I mean, who would who would say no in that situation? Get to bowl with Maria Jose Rodriguez. That's awesome. And uh, then from there, they set records. So very cool story. Very, uh, very awesome and fun to watch. And a tournament record on the way to the lead. 1560 doubles performance. Just absolutely phenomenal. You know, folks, we mentioned Jordan Richard. We talked about her dominance through the first uh, through the first round, and we glance at live scoring. What do we see? Up on 17 and 18, Jordan Richard front seven. She is on fire here at the National Bowling Stadium. Uh, we are covering lanes 39. 72 outside of 43 and 44 uh that's uh that's the one pair that uh, offers us a little bit of a tricky situation to cover uh so we do not have the low end cover but the live scoring does make that available and unfortunately i talked about it and then I see a split up there in the eighth frame but uh jordan's still off to a demanding start so going to add on to her overall lead here after game one. Just a reminder to the good folks watching on Facebook and YouTube, uh, we just have a couple of frames left before uh, we're going to push the stream only to BullTV.com. So still time to subscribe to watch for the rest of the week. Just getting a few different price points to come in at. Live event coverage for the Queens only, $12.95. Pick up a monthly recurring subscription, $9.95, which gives you access to the entire site, including archived events, Historical coverage in the vault, coaching in the lab, the backstage channel as well for behind the scenes, and more full TV events. Spala working on strike state clean, had the washout conversion on this lane, lane 54 last time up. Nine point six. That's more than a half.
Stephanie with the spare. Going to be in the two teens. Going to get to uh, most likely north of plus 200 here. Sophia working on a couple strikes in a row, going pretty direct. Not going to make it three, though. But, uh, you know, a player at minus 40 can have a good day here and get into the mix. Two thirteen. Savalo will be at plus two oh one, our newest champion on the PWBA tour. Look around the center here. Looks like Brandy Brank is going to have herself a nice game already in the 250s. And one more strike to get her into the 260s to start things up. Sophia finishes with 197. So she will be at minus 43. Jordan picked up the split she left in the eighth frame, struck in the ninth. She can still shoot 277. So a chance for her last three games here at the Queens. She finished up yesterday with 290 and 269. Could be 277 here. So that's a, that is a big number three. North of plus 200 if she's able to throw the double there. Angie Ramirez Perea had a chance to get into the 270s. Uh, nine count on her first shot in the 10th. So 258 for max score. Sparing a strike on the field. Shannon Puhowski. 246 out of the gates. Ms. Culkin, 235. Claudia Cabrera, 240. Some of the bigger scores across the house here. Randy Branca did finish with 254. Alexis Nyer, 236. All right, everybody, with uh, with game one wrapping up here on our featured pair, we are going to go ahead and uh, take a quick break to switch off the Facebook and the YouTube feeds, and uh, everything's going to be over at BoldTV.com now, folks. So uh, once again, a big thank you for everyone who joined us here. Uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Hopefully, we'll see you over at BullTV.com. Uh, once again, a few different subscription pricing points to watch the rest of the Queens. It's going on till the 18th with the Step Ladder Finals live here on BullTV.com. So, we hope to see you uh, throughout the course of the day. Join the chat. It's a great community. Uh, a lot of good folks out there. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. And we will see you in game two here from the 2021 USBC Queens. Oh. 